Today I would like to talk about sympathetic magic. A wonderful example of sympathetic magic is a, a poppet or a moppet or a, or a voodoo doll, as sometimes they're called, an image. So you take an image, uh, maybe made out of wax or clay, and you make it look like a human, and then you baptize it, or, or you cleanse it, you consecrate it. Thou art no longer clay, thou art flesh and blood, thou art, and then you name it. And then if you are very skilled, the kinds of magical work that you do by virtue of the fact of your, your witch's pyramid, with this image, they, it happens to the person. So that's oftentimes used in healing. I mean, people think about it with hexing and cursing, but that's not really how most of us use images. Most of us don't put curses on people with images, but we can use it for healing or for prosperity. And a lot of times, most of the time when I use image magic, it's not for other people, it's for myself. There's other kinds of sympathetic magic. Most of the sympathetic magic with candles, the candle represents something. You know, and then the other candles represent something else, and you might move certain candles toward or away from a candle that represents the subject of the spell, uh, maybe over a period of time. So, for instance, if you're trying to draw someone close to you, you might have a candle that represents you and a candle that represents the other person, and then each day you bring that candle a little closer until the final day of the spell the two candles are, are touching. For instance, like if you're trying to get new customers, so you'd have a candle that represents all the new customers that you want and a, and a candle that represents you. And little by little, one day at a time, you bring that candle closer to you and that represents sympathetically what's going on with those candles is going on with your business. So, that's sympathetic magic. You do something on the microcosm that has an effect on the macrocosm. Well, that's a beautiful way to work magic. But what if you saw your life as a puppet? What if your whole life was a puppet? Then you could, if you were skilled at your witch's pyramid, if you had built your power appropriately, you could easily do magical spells using nothing but your day-to-day -day activities. You, you wouldn't ever have to have an altar. You wouldn't ever have to let anybody even know that you're a witch. You wouldn't have to have any special oils, incenses, candles, perfumes, altar cloths. You wouldn't have to have any of those things. Not, not to say that you can't have those things, but you could easily work sympathetic magic with nothing other than what you're going about your day with. So, for instance, let's say I wanted to have a prosperous year. Let's say I wanted to increase my, my financial income significantly. What I could do is I could think in terms of, well, where I want to walk on prosperous ground. Wherever I go, I want, to, I want my, my path to bring me to more and more prosperity each and every day. So what I could do is I could take a pair of shoes, preferably a, a, a pair of shoes that, that don't look so great, that need some, some help, and I could shine my shoes. I could really take a lot of great care shining those shoes, refurbishing those shoes, you know, really making them gorgeous while I have maybe a chant or a visualization. And I charm the shoes as I'm shining them. I'm not just shining shoes. It looks to the naked eye that I'm shining shoes, but if I'm silently or even aloud chanting things and visualizing a charm on those shoes, then what I'm doing is I'm using that shoe shining as a, as a way to charm the shoes so that as my year goes by, I'm walking on the path of prosperity or whatever I want those shoes to bring me to. Right? We've talked about this with household magic many times. When I clean the kitchen... My kitchen is my poppet. So I, I want to make sure that everything's put away. I want to make sure that everything is sparkling. I want to make sure that everything just sparkles and glows, right? And as I do that, I dedicate it. I dedicate my kitchen <laughs> to whatever I need. So let's say that I needed, let's say I was having a health condition, and I could say, as I put this kitchen in order and make it shine, so does infinite intelligence take my body and put it in order and make it shine. Right? So I'm, I'm using my kitchen and the cleaning of my kitchen as a spell 
to get greater health or to heal a, heal a problem with my body. Let's say I'm ironing my clothes for the day. What a waste of time just ironing clothes, just ironing a shirt. What if I charmed that shirt and that it was a magic shirt for the day? right? And as I'm ironing it, I say, as I iron this shirt, so does infinite intelligence iron out all difficulties, iron out all the wrinkles in my life. You know, and I can be more specific than that. Let's say I had a problem at work, something that just I couldn't understand. I couldn't figure it out. I had to, I had to figure this problem out so that I could have success in a certain area, and I was just stumped. Then I say, well, I'm going to charm my shirt. As I iron out the wrinkles of this shirt, so does infinite intelligence iron out the wrinkles of this problem. And you can do that based on the lunar phases. If you're doing a banishing, maybe you had a problem in a relationship. There was just like some fighting or something that you wanted to banish that aspect of your relationship. So what you could do is you could say, well, I'm going to go through and sort through this closet and I'm going to get rid of things, worn out things that I don't want anymore. I'm going to either donate certain clothes. I'm going to get rid of trash. I'm going to get rid of things. I'm going to eliminate things from this closet that no longer serve me. So then you dedicate it. This closet is my poppet. I dedicate this as I clean out unwanted things from this closet and eliminate them. So does infinite intelligence clean out problems in this relationship and eliminate them. You see, you have all the magical tools that you need just in your daily life. And people really miss out on having real success in their magic because they always are thinking of magic as being something that they have to do special and distinct and different from their day-to-day activities. Whereas if you charm your life, if you live a charmed life, then in addition to, yeah, of course you can have, have witchy-woo stuff that you do, absolutely. And you can incorporate witchy-woo stuff in your rituals as much as you want to. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But a lot of times people think, I need special things. You know, I need special ingredients in order to work magic. And actually, you have everything you need right in front of you. Whatever tasks need to be accomplished that day, if you magify them... <laughs> If you create a sympathetic spell out of that, then you actually are able to work magic and save a lot of time. Now, one thing I will say when you're working sympathetic magic the way I'm describing, I would recommend that you keep track of it, that you make sure that you time it, that you put it in your diary, and that you refer back to it so that you can see whether or not it worked. You don't just cast spells indiscriminately and and not follow up on them and not not be clear about them and not time them properly. But we leave a lot of valuable activity in our lives on the table without recognizing that that activity is wasted effort that we could actually turn into something magical. There's a great amount of power in the moves that we make through our lives, and we take that stuff for granted. And that's a trick of the ego to say, no, no, magic isn't here, magic is over there. Magic is not inside of you, magic is over there. You got to get a special thing. You got to do the other thing. You got to get that special thing. And you got to get special information. And you have to have special words, and you have to have special talismans. And not that those things are bad. Well, of course, we use all of those things. But when the ego gets a hold of that idea, it says anything that's not that is not magical. So you, that it, it does that in order for you to avoid actually having some success in the here and now. So for instance, let's say I was, I was cleaning the front step of my dwelling, like the, the porch. I could take some wash water that I want to scrub that off with, and I could put maybe a little bit of sugar in there, and maybe some verbena perfume or some some other kind of perfume that makes sense to me, maybe some lavender or whatever, depending on what I'm working on. And that would be another way to key it into my mind that, okay, this isn't mundane. This is actually turning into a spell now. What I'm doing is everybody that walks across this, this threshold has to come in with happy energy, otherwise they can't enter. They have to come in with peaceful energy and leave their, their, their negative energy outside. Otherwise, they can't come in. 
And so I, I charm my front step that way. Since I'm going to, you know, be having to clean it anyway, why not turn it into magic? Why not cr- cast a spell on my front step, on my front door? If I'm taking a shower f- for the day, I keep a bar of verbena-scented soap in my shower. So I don't need necessarily something special. I can charm that soap so that as I wash my body, I am aligning my energy and my aura to a specific and keying it into something specific for the day. Like say I had a, a contract to sign that day. I can I can charm that soap and so that when I wash my body, that I'm keying it into the fact that I'm going to have a very successful uh, negotiation of that contract. You see, not necessarily having to, oh gosh, now I have an, I have to find time for a spell now because I've got, I've got this thing happening. Where am I going to find time for this? You don't have to find time for it. You've got ample opportunity to turn any of your normal, regular, everyday activities into something non-mundane and very magical. Now, like I said, it's helpful if you time those things according to the lunar phase, but that's not always even necessary. It depends. And that's the the case with any kind of spell. Yes, it's good to time things according to the lunar phase, but need always supersedes timing. So if you need something, it doesn't matter if it's waxing or waning, dark moon, full moon, whatever. You can do whatever you need if 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 the need is great. But if you're if you're working on a specific goal, it's always a good time to time it appropriate to the to the lunar phase and maybe even to the day of the week. So that I can do that front stoop maybe on a Monday, the Monday after the new moon. Since I'm going to have to clean it anyway, let's schedule it on the Monday after the new moon so that my spell will have an extra kick. And so that when people are entering my house, they do have to conform to my will. They do have to either leave their shit outside or not come in. Right? And that's the case in my house. (laughs) Nobody ever comes. A lot of people knock on the door and they turn around and walk away (laughs) because they they, they don't feel comfortable coming into my house because they don't have a peaceful energy. And that's my right. It's my right to say, leave your shit outside. You don't, you don't get to come in with it. Maybe cleaning out your car or washing your car, washing your own car. You could take and charm the water that you're washing your car with so that you're blessing your car so that your car is always filled with safety and always taking you to, to wonderful places, always running well. You're going to charm your car. Don't just wash it. Charm it. The sky's the limit. The sky is really the limit as far as all of that goes. Where people, I think, sometimes miss the mark with magic is they think, magic is outside of me. Magic is in, in some sort of special ritual, some sort of special ingredient, some sort of special information, some sort of special alphabet. And all of those things have their place, but only to the degree that you can internalize them and access the magic that is within you, because the the magic only comes from the divine spark inside of you. There's nothing outside of you that's going to help you work magic. The magic comes from you, and you can really viscerally get to know that if you start making your life your puppet. Start allowing your life to be the sympathetic magic through which you find success. Again, you don't have to give up your other kinds of rituals. Absolutely not. We we teach all kinds of wonderful spells. But you don't want to miss the opportunities in your day-to-day life to have magic be very practical and very available to you here and now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, blessed be. Thank you.